Welcome to Proven Improbable, where we focus on metals, mining, and more. I'm your host, Maurice Jackson. Today, we will discuss a company that is expanding and discovering heap leach gold deposits in Nevada. I'm speaking of Northern Empire Resources, trading on the TSXV symbol NM and on the OTC symbol PSPGF. Joining us today is Michael Allen. He is the president, CEO, and director of Northern Empire. Mr. Allen, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much. Mr. Allen, for someone new to the story, who is Northern Empire and what is the thesis that you're attempting to prove? Northern Empire is, is a relatively new company in, in the Nevada space. We are a, a team of what we call businessmen that do that do mining. The The company is focused on what is called the uh, the Sterling Gold Project. It's about two hours northwest of Las Vegas. And the thesis that, that, we're, uh, that we're testing is, uh, is essentially high-grade gold mineralization in the in the southern part of the U.S. and, and a heap leach operation that we're trying to uh, to establish down there. Now, please provide us with a historical narrative on the Sterling Gold Project and why Northern Empire decided to make this your flagship project. Yeah, uh, the Sterling Gold Project is essentially two past-producing operations that have been combined under the, the banner of Northern Empire. There's what's called the Sterling Gold Mine, which was in, uh, operated by Imperial Metals, and then there's also what we call the, uh, or what was called the Daisy Mine, and is our, our crown project in the in the northern part of the, of the project. Uh, grossly speaking, the the projects are uh, 160 kilometers northwest of, of Las Vegas, located in the in the Walker Lena of of Nevada. Uh, we're in the mountain range called the the Bear Mountains, uh, B A R E, as in not a bug blade of grass or, or or uh, or plant, um, yeah, and it's a it's an and it's an excellent place to develop mines, and these are past producers that have been successful in the in the past with uh, excellent metallurgy and in a great location. Now, Mr. Allen, the timing to acquire the Sterling Gold Project couldn't have been better for Northern Empire. Please share with us your optionality of success, and are there any reversionary interest on the Sterling Gold Project? Yeah, we we were able to to purchase a, a fully permitted uh, gold mine from from Imperial Metals. Uh, we were able to get a, a hundred percent interest in the in the property. There's uh, there's a few NSRs on it, depending on which part of the, of, the, of the ground that that you're on. Uh, there's a two point two five over the Sterling mine itself, and as part of the transaction with Imperial, we gave a two percent NSR for anything that wasn't previously burdened with an NSR to Imperial, but. You know, we own 100%, and we've staked a lot more ground that is not burdened with an NSR. All right. Would you please share with us your management's philosophy? I think that the, the best way to, to describe a management philosophy is, is to sort of go back to that to the statement. This is, this is businessmen that, that do mining. So we're, we're looking for a couple of things out, out, of, out of the company, and, and it's all about liquidity. I mean, there is an option in the in with the, the back the backbone of the, the permitted asset that is sterling of growing this into a company that is is a large uh, U.S. based gold producer with a with a, with a a starter asset being the sterling gold mine, or there there is an option that that there are other large U.S. based gold producers that are going to look at at the sterling asset, the sterling project, and say that's uh, that's something that we want and create that liquidity that way. So it's a movement of, of shareholders in and out, but we're we're dominantly driven as shareholders ourselves and to shepherd the capital in a, an effective manner to increase shareholder value. Michael, now that we have a historical context of the Sterling Gold Project, which contains four deposits, let's discuss Northern Empire's main deposit, the Sterling Mine. What can you share with us? And there's a lot of, of very interesting things uh, about the, the Sterling Gold Mine. It's been around in various forms since the, the 1970s. It started as a private mine. Uh, operated by by some guys out of out of Nevada, it was swallowed into uh, E and B, which ultimately became Imperial. It was operated in the in the past as an underground heat leach operation, quite high grade, uh, with exceptional recoveries. Uh, historic grades mined from the underground were seven seven point four grams per ton. Recoveries were about eighty eight percent. And what happened in the in the past was. Imperial realized that there was an opportunity to transition from the underground operation to an open pit operation, and they began the the permitting exercise and did the engineering 
internally for, for Imperial to actually say, okay, there's an opportunity here to go and open pit. Uh, they went through the permitting process and they, uh, they had a, a gap. The, the permits were, were delayed uh, before they got them and they, they didn't make the transition to the open pit themselves. When that gap in, uh, in permitting being in hand came in was when, when the Mount Pauly uh, spill happened. And so Imperial was capital constrained Nothing could happen down at Sterling is that all their capital went to fix Mount Pauly. And so that created the opportunity for, for Northern Empire to, to make this acquisition. Now, Mr. Allen, the Sterling mine is permitted for restart. Is that correct? That is correct, yeah. When will it restart, and what is the strategy in delaying the restart? I couldn't give you a, a hard date as to, to when we're, we're going to restart the, the Sterling. But the strategy for delaying the restart is to really understand what we've got both at the at the Sterling and uh, at what we call the Crown Series uh, of deposits in in the north, the Sterling, um, with it being a high grade underground operation in, in the past, there were several opportunities that were that were left kind of untested. Uh, nothing less than a, than a three and a half gram per ton intercept was thought to be significant for the Sterling because of of the underground nature of it at the time. So there were several shallow uh, intercepts that need to be followed up on. So things like 22 meters of two grams per ton uh, that need to be followed up on. And we're going to be investigating those and making sure that we understand and are able to optimize value of the sterling before we do a, a restart. And then also right now, we're, we're focusing on the crown part of the project, uh, what we call the, the northern part, and seeing what we can get for, for value for shareholders up there. Mr. Allen, being that the sterling mine was a previous producer, what can you share with us regarding metallurgy, existing infrastructure, and capital expenditures? Historical cap capital expenditures are probably the, the most difficult to, to quantify because it's been around for, for a long time. Uh, the metallurgy is, is excellent. Uh, the commercial leach cycle was 88% uh, recovery in, 30, in a 30-day leach cycle using run of mine. So you're looking at, at a very coarse material going onto, onto the leach pad. It's about 24-inch minus. Um, existing infrastructure on, on the, the site, the, the process plant is there, which is the, uh, what it's called ADR or carbon columns for, for your listeners. Uh, that is sized actually for the, for the, uh, permitted, um, open pit operation. So really in terms of going forward capital, it's actually a fairly simple operation to, to turn on. Uh, there's generators there, there's offices there, there's manpower there, the well is already drilled. And that process plant is there, and, and actually it is operational. Uh, we're actually pumping solutions through it right now and uh, recovering about three-quarters of an ounce per day. All right, moving on to the Crown series of deposits, which consists of the DAISY, Secret Pass, and SNA, respectively. Michael, what can you share with us regarding the DAISY deposit? Well, the DAISY deposit is, uh, is an exceptional uh, high-grade deposit. Um, it has all the signatures of a, of a Carlin uh, deposit, which is one of the, the generally what you see is the, the larger uh, deposits in the state of Nevada. Uh, Daisy is about 2.1 grams per, per ton. It's hosted in uh, in carbonate rocks, um, and the it's also a past producer. There's a small pit there where uh, Glamis and Ray Rock exploited the a part of the deposit in in the past. Metallurgy there was was excellent. That uh, that deposit supposedly historically received 75% uh, recovery run of mine. So it's a, it's, a, it's a very interesting deposit, and it's open up dip, and there's a lot of exploration potential around it. How about Secret Pass? Secret Pass is, is, uh, is further to the east from the, from the Daisy. We actually just released a, a whole out of, out of uh, Secret Pass a couple of days ago, and it, it was uh, 70 meters of 1.7 grams per ton. It's an oxide deposit. It's epithermal, so slightly different. Um, there's a big structure that goes through the, the valley that, that links up Daisy Secret Pass and, and SNA. And this uh, Secret Pass is in the hanging wall of the, of the structure, so it's slightly different. It's an epithermal deposit in volcanics. All right, and speaking of SNA, what can you share with us? Uh, SNA is probably the, the least known of the, uh, of, or least understood of the deposits, the Crown Series of of deposits, it's about 1.6 grams per 
per ton. It hasn't been exploited. Um, both uh, Secret Pass and SNA were mined in in the past. Uh, Secret Pass and Daisy were mined in the in the past. SNA has not been. It was discovered actually drilling a, as drilling a water well for uh, another operation in the area called the Motherload, uh, and it's a, a shallow oxide uh, deposit. And it's also we think that it's also a, a carlin. You somewhat answered my question already, but I'll ask you just for the record here, sir. Is the lithology consistent within the Crown series of deposits? No, they they are uh, they are different. Um, as I said, uh, the Daisy and SNA are appear to be Carlin's uh, type deposits. They have slightly different hosts, um, but they're carbonate hosted, and and uh, Secret Pass is, is an epithermal, so it is, it is different. It's a volcanic hosted rock. Mr. Allen, what can you share with us regarding Northern Empire's conducting an aggressive campaign in the Crown series of deposits? Yeah, we are uh, with two rigs right now. We've got two RC rigs going. Uh, as I mentioned, we we did just release a, a hole out of uh, out of Secret Pass, seventy meters of one point seven grams per ton. Uh, a few weeks before that, we we had released a hole out of the Daisy deposit, which was one hundred and twenty four meters of, of one point four grams per ton. Um, very high grade for for the state of of Nevada in this this day and age, um, and we're going to be releasing more results as we go forward, and the and the rigs move their way through the property in a systematic fashion. And is the goal for Northern Empire to build a mine and go into production or arbitrage? I think that the that the best thing uh, is you know, as as we with the management philosophy, it's about uh, shareholder capital and uh, and increasing shareholder value and liquidity. So there is a, a, a scenario of us turning it on, or there is a scenario of, of somebody else uh, coming in and making an, an acquisition. I think that there, both scenarios are there, and we think that we, are, we have the team and the, and the management that, that can build a mine and, uh, and make this into a, a company that is, is a mine operator. Speaking of teams, uh, I learned from Rick Rule and Doug Casey that the people running the business are equally, if not more important, than the latent material in the ground. Mr. Allen, please introduce us to your board of directors and what unique skill sets do they bring to Northern Empire? Well, we'd like to say that uh, that our management team is businessmen that, that do mining. Um, grossly speaking, there, there's three groups on the, on the board. Uh, you've got Doug Hurst and and Ray Thralkeld who were part of the the New Market team. Um, Doug was a founder of that company, and, and Ray was a was the chairman of, of the board when that uh, company was was uh, was sold to uh, to Kirkland Lake Gold for for a billion dollars. These are really uh, businessmen. Ray is a mine builder by nature. Uh, he's an ex Barrick guy, and I believe that the number that he's built for Barrick is about 80 million ounces worth of, of production. So, really strong guy. Uh, second group on the on the board is what we'll call the the Kamenak team, and we've got two of the founders and directors there. It's John Robbins and Jim Peterson, and they've been were successfully involved with uh, with Kamenak from its found being founded as a as an explore co in uh, in the Yukon and transitioning and being. Uh, Sold to Gold Corp in 2016 for 520 million dollars, and then the third group is uh, is the under what I'll call the underworld team, and they are the guys that uh, that founded and managed the uh, the, the underworld uh, company. It was sold to uh, to Kinross uh, back in the in the day. It was the white gold discovery up in the Yukon. That's Adrian Fleming, uh, Jeff Sundar, and Daryl Cardi. And so it's a it's a really uh, good experienced board, management, businessmen, founders, and, and successful sellers of, of companies uh, that that we, I've got on the board. Tell us about Michael Allen and what makes him qualified for the task at hand. Oh, the hardest thing of all to talk about myself. Uh, I'm a geologist by trade. Uh, I've been in the in the mining business for for about twenty years. I. I describe myself as an advanced project guy. Uh, I like the the projects that are that are more towards uh, resources and and development. Uh, I've been all over the the Northwest Territories, Yukon, Europe, uh, looking at evaluating and, and running projects. The last ten years, I've been dominantly focused in uh, in Nevada, and I think that that's probably you know if you if you look at, at another article that that Rick Rule 
has, has taught or has talked about is you know you get a management team that is familiar with the with the jurisdiction. So I've been in Nevada for about the last ten years. I'm familiar with the regulatory regime. Uh, I know the, the the permitting people. I know the service providers, and so that's really where where for for me my niche is is, is to get a, a Nevada project and get it across the the line in the way that it is most cost effective and ultimately you know being uh, efficient with shareholder capital. What can you share with us about the technical team? It's it's really a, a great team that we've got down there. There's a there's the mine team, which is, is uh, the mine manager from from Sterling, and all the staff crossed over with us. So the Sterling mine being on care and maintenance, there's a few people that are there. The the metallurgist, the process manager, and the mine manager. They're 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 seasoned professionals that have been doing this for a long time, and they are delighted that somebody like Northern Empire came in saw the opportunity that they'd been seeing for for 20 years and hadn't been able to to uh, act on you know uh, and make it a focus so they're, they're really excited then we've got the exploration team and we've got a, a an experienced group of Nevada professionals that are running the the exploration before these are guys that, are, that have worked with uh, with Barrick and various other companies throughout the states making discoveries and putting mines in, into production so I'm very proud of, of the team and then we also have a, a series of, of what I will call um, hungry young kids, and they're really interesting to, to watch because it's out of the box thinking, and, and they're they're out there mapping, sampling, enthusiastically working hard, and, and coming up with with questions that need to be answered and, and making new discoveries. So it's a it's a very exciting team to to watch on on the technical side. I'm hearing serially successful in Nevada centric when you're discussing your team, sir. Uh, let's discuss some numbers here. How much cash yeah. or cash equivalents do you have? Uh, in Canadian terms, sixteen million dollars. Talk to us about your cash flow distribution. What is the ratio between cash spent and tangible assets on the balance sheet? Well, we we spend most of our our cash uh, and put it in into the ground. We're going to be spending about ten million bucks uh, in the sterling asset. Uh, this year, and, and then we've got, uh, and then then we also will be spending about uh, three million dollars in the, in overhead. So we're going to exit the year with about five million bucks in the till. Um, we've already obviously spent some money we're, as we're in mid March. How much debt do you have? We don't have any debt. Who are some of your institutional investors? Oh. Our single largest institutional investor, if you consider them, is, is Coor Mining. Uh, they have 11.6% uh, of the company. Uh, following them, uh, it's Donald Smith. Uh, Invesco is in there. Uh, McKenzie, RBC, uh, a group called Zechner. Those would be that. That would probably rock, round out the the top five, top eight. What is the float? Uh, retail shareholders is about 40% of the company. Um, actually, and in terms of institutional shareholders, actually management has a large chunk as, as well. We own about 8% of the company. What is your burn rate? Uh, on a, This year, our total budget is about uh, $13 million, and we started the year in January with just over 18. So we'll exit the year with about five in the till. Are there any redundant assets such as patent mining claims? Um, not not particularly. We, as part of the transaction uh, with with Imperial, we acquired all the the assets of Sterling Gold Mining Corporation. That included some minor NSRs, uh, and we've been gradually liquidating them as as they've uh, become a become interest to, to people. But there's not a lot of uh, of redundant assets. Tell us about your share structure. It's a fairly tight share structure. Uh, Currently, we've got about 66.5 million uh, out right now, fully diluted with the options and, and warrants. We go to about 77. Are there any change of control fees? And if so, what are the terms? Uh, we have industry standard employment contracts for for you know for the senior management of of the company. Um, also, myself, uh, it is a uh, it's a three year change of control clause. Um, that is, that is actually it's it's uh, indexed off of the uh, the share price to uh, motivate me to keep uh, shareholder value up. 
All right, sir, you survived the storm. Mr. Allen, multi-layered question here. What is the next unanswered question for Northern Empire? When should we expect results? And what would determine success? I think that the that the the unanswered question is is what is the potential of, of the crown uh, series of, of deposits in the northern part of, of the project? There's a, a lot of, of uh, good geology that has yet to be tested. Uh, we're out there actively exploring right now. Uh, in terms of, of results, uh, as I said earlier, we've got two rigs up there, and they're moving their way through the through the project uh, right now. So we're going to be releasing results probably in a fit in a fairly steady stream between now and and the end of of summer. Uh, and what will determine success? I think that uh, that ultimately uh, success is uh, again as we go back to you know an increase in, in shareholder value and a, and an interesting. Uh, gold discovery in an underexplored part of, of Nevada. Mr. Allen, we've covered the good. What keeps you up at night that we don't know about? <laughs> well, that's a, that's an easy one. My seven-year-old son that's uh, that's uh, on spring break and ready to do all sorts of fun things in, in his day off. Um, well, you have no mercy for me. I have seven-year-old twins and a nine-year-old. <laughs> and and grandchildren, so. <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> yeah, I, what keeps me uh, what keeps me up at night? Um, what I, I I would go back to my similar to what what the the crown series of deposits will be. I mean, we've got resources up, up there. Uh, we've got some interesting geology, uh, but it is an early stage exploration program. So you, you really have to to temper expectations you know we're putting out great results but it, it is a, it is an early stage exploration program there's a lot of, of things that need to be be thought of and, and discovered but you know I like what we're what we're doing I like the team that we're that we're that we're that we've got uh, I like the location it's the best jurisdiction in the in the world for for mining so there's a there's risk obviously because this is mining but there is reward because this is a you know we've we've done the best that we can in terms of picking an asset that gives a, a good shot for, for success. And finally, what did I forget to ask? Oh boy, You've, uh, this has been a, been a thorough inter- interview. Um, what did you forget to ask? I, people on the, the more technical side will ask questions about uh, you know, how confident we are in the, in the metallurgy. Particularly at the at the Sterling, that's a that's a common question. Uh, I've been asked several times how many columns and how many bottom rolls, and are you sure that the sample is 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 representative? And and uh, the answer that I give to that is, well, it's been mined before, and these deposits have been mined before. So the um, the metallurgy has largely been been done on you know not columns or bottle rolls; it's mine scale. So. I think that the de-risking part is is uh, has been been done for a lot of these these assets deposits. Michael, for someone listening who wants to get more information on Northern Empire, please share the contact details. Yeah, the best thing for for more information about the the company is uh, to have a look at our website, which is www.northernemp.com. Um, our ticker symbols are on the. The V, uh, the TSX V is NM, and on the uh, OTC, it's PSPGF. And for direct inquiries, please contact Dylan Berg. His phone number is 604-646-4522, and you may email him at info at northernamp.com. And last but not least, please visit our website, www.provenimprobable.com, where we interview the most respected names in the natural resource space. You may reach us at contact at provenimprobable.com. Michael Allen of Northern Empire, thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. Thank you. As a reminder for our listeners, Northern Empire is a sponsor of Proven and Probable. Thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. Remember to like and subscribe for more conversations with the most respected names in the natural resource space. Check out our website at www.provenandprobable.com. The information presented on Proven and Probable 
is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.